Here's the thing. Rick Barnes will be 70 this July. He's a six-time conference coach of the year. He is a national coach of the year. He went to a Final Four all the way back in 2003. It's been a while. He has had very successful teams in Knoxville. He's never had a team like this one. And if Rick Barnes is going to climb the ladder in Arizona, climb a ladder to cut down a national championship net, there is not going to be a better case, a better opportunity for him to do that than with this team right here, right now. Tennessee continues to show that they're in Tier A. Tier A, in my mind, if I put together four or five national championship contenders. And that is because they've got the backcourt with Ziegler and Vescovy. They've got the defense. Defense has never been the issue for Tennessee basketball. But great offense beats great defense nine times out of ten. Now Tennessee has a dude that when they need him to, he delivers in the moment every time. He has Jimmer Fredette, Doug McDermott-like bucket-getting ability. He is that good. He is a consensus. He is a consensus first-team All-American, <laughs> and the Tennessee Volunteers can win it all. There's no doubt in my mind. This is Rick Barnes' best chance left in his. Can career. I ask you guys? I, I want to ask you guys both a question, right? So we, everybody in college basketball media, anointed Houston and Purdue. Uh, I'm sorry, UConn and Purdue as like the top two teams, separated themselves from everybody else in the sport. Like what, like two weeks ago, um, and then mm-hmm. UConn and Purdue lost, and now it's kind of been a theme. We've talked about it the last two nights that Houston is right; they they belong in the conversation with Purdue and UConn. Now, personally, I am not quite ready to to put Tennessee at the same level as those top three yet, but I think it's a lot closer than people realize, and I, I don't think that they get enough credit. Where do you guys stand on that? I think they're. They're they're approaching that they're still second tier, but you know, analytically, um, I don't know if the people at home know that like trapezoid of excellence I've been seeing online, like they fit the bill of a team that can win a championship or a final four. Um, you know, with the offensive profile and defensive profile. I think a lot of teams, even Houston, watching Houston last night, love the talent, love the defense, but they sometimes go cold on offense and become stagnant and you only got to lose one game and, and it's all over. And so teams like that scare me. I like Tennessee a little more because they have a lot more offensive variability and the defense is going to travel. So like tonight, perfect example, Auburn has them on their heels. What team in the top five has a guy like Don't Connect that can take over the game without, you know, even with Edie, we got to get Edie the ball. We're going to double team. It got to the point where they were triple teaming Don't Connect. And when you're triple teaming a kid in college, um, it's not going to go well for you, you know, just defensively yeah. and, and talent wise. Um, so I, I like them as a real contender uh, just off the basis off the fact that they have this offensive juggernaut that on any given night. I mean, if he goes to the tournament and the role starts rolling, you know, 30 point games off, Tennessee will be there at the end. They're in the mix. They're, they're, they're in that top mix. They're not tier B for me. They are tier A. They have a combined mm-hmm. 12 quad one, quad two wins. They have no bad losses. No blemishes. They don't have a quadrant three loss, Tennessee. And if and if you look, Arizona has two. Uh, they've got one quad three loss. North Carolina has one quad three loss. So the other teams that are in the mix for that two seed, uh, rather the one seed, to overtake Arizona, you know, we're talking about Carolina. We got to be talking about Tennessee to get on the one line. More to come on After Dark.